darling Fumi Nation, how are you? How are we? My name is Fumi Desalovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you guys are so very welcome indeed. Do we love the beat? Do we love the fit? Are we living for the hair? This is just a simple ponytail that I got at a beauty supply store. You know I film every day, so I just try to get, you know, extras. And so I got like a medium length, which I wear, and I got this long one. And so I did like a nice, beautiful, neutral-ish, smoky-ish, nude lip eye. You'll be asking me, what is this? Okay, I guess I should show you. So we have, and I've been using them all week because... I've packed up majority of my makeup. It is Juvia's Place Lippies, the Nubian Nude, we have that. And then we have Lady Lipsticks. So I put the lip on, I put lip gloss, and then I use the color lip pencil and it's copacetic. As you very well know, I love using the word. And I have been using these two palettes because I can do a multitude of looks with them and still look fabulous. So it was all about the, the deep black eye. I should do a makeup tutorial. Maybe I'll do like a story and makeup tutorial with you guys because you guys seem to like lovely conversations. Yeah? Alrighty. So we have Juvia's Place, the coffee shop. Let me open it for you. Bada bing. Yes, ma'am. I live. And then we have Colored Rain, and this is called Rebellious Nudes. And there you have it, my darlings. I am also trying to take care of my dark hands. Yes, I have dark hands and dark feet. So I have been going to this um, spa, quite fabulous. Christina introduced me to them here in England because they really take care of women or people of color without stripping your complexion. I don't want to strip my complexion. I like being black. I like being dark. I love it. I love it. I, I don't think I could be fumski wumski in any other complexion from any other country. I had to be black. I had to be African. You know, I just had to be. This is what it was. So my hands are dark because I used to be this complexion. Living in a white man's country, I'm getting lighter and lighter. Can you see what I'm doing for my man? And so my face got lighter, my body got lighter, but my elbows, my knees, my feet, and my hands stayed the same complexion. So I'm trying to even it out. Alrighty, darling. So that is that. Ooh, 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 ooh. The fit. It's a simple dress. There we go. Look, look, look. Let me turn to the side. I guess I should step back so that you can see what it looks like. It's just a simple dress, office ish kind of dress because we're talking about serious topics. I dress for the mood. Have you guys noticed? Like if I'm doing the BET, I wear a mini skirt. But uh, this is all legal. Legal, legal. You know, legalities. A lot of you said I should have been a lawyer. That's what my mom and dad thought I would be. But I said, let me switch up to entertainment because my heart couldn't take it. But I did go to university. I studied business. And one of my favorite subjects was psychology. It was an elective course, meaning that you didn't have to take it. If you wanted to, you can take it just to add for your points and everything for graduation. And so I just took it. And I ended up doing psychology 101, 102, all the way to, I think, 105. I was fascinated by the way our mind works. Today's conversation is all about Kalisha Hood and her son. Kalisha is a single mom, I'm under the impression. And she went to a Chinese restaurant. I think it's a Chinese restaurant. A restaurant, anyway. Her son was outside. Her 14-year-old beautiful son and a quarrel escalated with another man inside the restaurant to the point that the man threatened her warned her a couple of times that if she did not keep quiet he was going to punch her she did not keep quiet and he beat her up I'm not going to put the video here. But he beat her up. It was extremely frightening. I don't know why. Put it this way. It wasn't even necessary to beat her up the way that he did. You would have thought that he was beating a man. One. 
Secondly, if you happen to walk in, or let me say, if I happen to walk in, I would right away immediately believe that this woman's life was in danger, that she just might not make it. That was to the extent of how this man was beating this woman. After he had threatened her, and he carried out the threat and the warning, and he beat her up when she refused to be quiet. Her son came into the restaurant and fired shots, and he died. They were arrested, the mother and the son, and I think yesterday or day before yesterday, they were released. The DA said there'll be no charges. I like to take a beat with these kind of stories. I don't want to make mistakes. And sometimes you don't get the whole story right away. You need to take your time so that you have everything in my basket and I can come forward and give you my humble opinion. Because when I tell you, you guys filled my DMs. You filled my DMs with this. This was personal. Oh, Priya. Let me see. Thank you to Priya. Priya is uh, my estate agent. Thank you, my darling Priya. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for executing this and responding to me with a quickness. <laughs> I love you, sis. My love to your sons. Mwah. So, you guys were in my DMs. And you said for me, Kalisha Hood, I want to hear what you got to say. I don't, I'm not going to bring it. I don't want you to see the names. Just look. Just look. It's, it's trying to turn it. Let it turn. There you go. Look. 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 And the messages kept going on and going on and going on and going on. Because I read some of them. And so... I'm going to tell you, I have to break it up in a couple of places. And I'm also going to give you some story time. Okay? Because the situation here comes from so many different angles. What I will say, above all else, is that my perspective on circumstances like this changed when I became a wife. And when I became, for sure, Adrian's mother. I believe that children that are born are born to us. They choose us. We don't choose them. We just want a child. But every child that you birth comes to you. Um, I hear about Chicago. Let me start there. I've heard a lot of things about Chicago. And I've heard about how some of these brothers out in these streets show no love, no respect, no regard to women. They do as they please. Majority of the time is because they can get away with it. Being a single mom, as far as I'm concerned, and I think I put the post up, Kiki Palmer recently became a mom. And within five, six days of being a mother, she came out here and said, you know what, so single moms, I don't know how you do it on a daily. I just came on here to say, if you are a single parent, pull out your cape. Matter of fact, clip off your angel wings because I don't know how you did it. And I really don't want this to sound like, you know, pandering or, or something like this. Because I know there's a million and one reasons why somebody wants to be a single parent or has become a single parent. Maybe they lost somebody. Maybe they don't want to deal with somebody. Maybe it's a choice. Um, but when it comes to raising a kid, I've already learned in these short few days that it takes a village. Um, and sometimes that's a privilege. And I just want anybody out there that is a single parent that's been doing this um, friends of mine, people that I don't know, family members of mine, I'm really in my, in my heart. It bring, it bring tears to my eyes. I am just truly, profoundly impressed. 
I have the greatest regard and love and affection and empathy and compassion for single mothers. I don't know what I'm going to become in life because I feel as if I might be here and make it to a hundred, I don't know, but I just feel like I do. So I'm halfway, I'm a middle-aged woman now, I'm 54, and I've learned a couple of things. And I hope that from this YouTube channel, from my brand, from my television talk show, that I get enough money, that I get more and more influence, so that I can start various foundations. I can be a philanthropist, and one of them is for single mothers that they be protected, that they be stood up for 10 toes deep in the line of defense at all times because they don't guard it like that. Because the society does not respect women and they are supposed to always take it, shelve it, be quiet, take the high road and so they live in a society of imperialism. I'm bringing out my university English now. <laughs> because sometimes you gotta do it. And it's very important. All my Fumi Nation babies out there, go to university, study, get a foundation. You might not use it right away, but I promise you, it's like a, a full on credit card in your pocket. Needless to say, the women out there in Chicago, that's what it is. It's the imperialism. It's that they are constantly, continuously pressured and bullied and they've begun to live like that to the point that this particular altercation that happened in the restaurant isn't really new news. It wasn't new news. It happens every day. And that is why this brother had the audacity, the flagrant audacity to not see anything wrong with what he was doing because brother's done it before. Because he's done it to his wife, because he does it in his community, because the community turns a blind eye. Because the community will say, go back to your man. Because the community did nothing about it that day when he threatened this woman. Somebody should have stepped up and said, I wish you would from the back washing the dishes. From the back, frying the chips. From the back, flipping back and forth the sushi. No, that's Japanese. From the back, flipping the fried rice. Somebody from the back should have said, I wish you would. And it should have been a chorus. Yeah, brother, you better step up out of here. No, we're not selling you this food no more. Get the F out. How dare you? Talk to who here? She's our customer. Get out. Not one person said it. Not one. This woman was standing there defending herself. She wanted to buy some food for herself and her son. Perhaps it was a good day that day. Perhaps she had a, like a little bit of change. And this guy spoiled it for her and then proceeded now to beat her up because she wouldn't keep quiet. This is going to be a long conversation, so give me a minute. The son came through and saw his mom's and he shot, smoked that ass. Um, some of you might know that there was an altercation here in London that I happened to witness. I was with my publicist. The video I'll link it below. This was a beat down from one girl to another. I didn't know them. I didn't know why it broke out. But I could see that this girl was in danger. She was dragged, or no, I think, I think she, she ran into um, uh, the train station for safety. But she was too slow and she couldn't get the gates to shut behind her quick enough. The ticket master was there and he was an older man who was all over the place. From outside, we could see how this other woman was just laying it on her. I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, for me, go in there and help this child. And I went in. I was able to break it up, 
because the Ticketmaster opened the uh, gates for the other girl to go and shut it behind so the other one couldn't pursue. It was only then, as the light went through, that I saw the knife. And I'm a tall woman. I'm five foot nine. If I wear the right kind of platforms, right kind of heels, I look like I'm six foot tall. I was humbled down to three feet, which is most probably Adrian's height. Because all I thought was Adrian. And I regretted going in. Because all I thought was Adrian and my husband. We had a minute and then she walked out. There's a wonderful person I know. He's a lovely gentleman. Over the years, I've gotten to love him even more. And we talk, we laugh. We don't kick it all the time, but when we do, you know, it's that kind of belly laugh. And it's such a good feeling. And his mother was a single mother. And he told me that, you know, Fooms, she will always be my mom's because the mother kept on calling relentlessly. And every single time, I think like 10 times, okay, exaggeration, I think like seven times she called and he picked up every single one. And I didn't see anything, but I think because there was some kind of silence and I made my face some kind of way, he felt it necessary to explain something to me. And he said, for me, my mom, she drives me crazy. <laughs> but I love her. When I was 15, um, new edition, so you know I'm going way back. That was when Bobby Brown was in a group. New Edition was fabulous. They came to town. She knew I wanted to go. I had all of the posters on, on the wall. She bought me the ticket, but she could only afford one ticket. And she stood out the entire four and a half hour concert until it was done. He said, I didn't know what love was as a 14-year-old boy, but I knew that she cared for me. And I brought my popcorn, I ate half, and I brought the other popcorn for her. So you see, when she calls me seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen 10, 15 times, I will always pick up that phone. This story was, must have been 15 years ago. I remember it to this very day. The restaurant failed that boy. The restaurant failed that woman. Let's not even talk about the fool that was punching. The restaurant failed the boy. And that boy had to step in to big man's shoes and do what he had to do. The relationship with mother and child, with father and son, with parent and child is a bond that you perhaps understand if you are also a parent and you have your own child, that you can understand. That it flips, it does flip. And in the other conversation that I had about the young children, the 13-year-old who had to take care of her siblings in the forest for 40 days matches up to this. Why? Because, heaven forbid, it's just me and Adrian. Adrian, you have to be a man. You're going to be my little man because your father is no longer here. And I am not superwoman. And that is the mistake. A lot of people think that, because I heard initially that it was thought that she called the boy into the restaurant. Like I said, I was talking about these children that survived in the forest, for, in the Amazon jungle for 40 days. They took a plane and it crashed. And their mother died after four days. On the fourth day, she told her 13-year-old daughter, 
take your nine-year-old brother, your four-year-old brother, that's the same age as Adrian, and your 11-month-old brother, go. I am, I'm not going to make it. But you need to go. Because you need to take care of these kids. And we found out as the story evolved that she had always trained her daughter to take care of the younger siblings. I'm the first in my family. I know what I got to do. I know what I have to do and what not to do. Father's Day came around. My brother and sister are not living in London, but my father was here. So when we went to go and get cards, I got cards on behalf of my sister, family, got cards on my brother's family, and gave to my dad. It was not the point that I have to wait for my siblings to get, give me the money to get, no. It was that it was my father's father's day. And that's what firstborns do. You're kind of like a little parent. It's a blessing. It is a blessing, it's not a curse. We're blessed, we're gifted. As a firstborn, you're blessed, you're gifted. As an only child, you're blessed, you're gifted. Because you learn. And that's what this mother did. She taught her daughter to survive. And who could have thought that that would test her for 40 days? And she took care of herself and three other kids. So when you're a single mom, you've got to put some respect on the name. Because she's a mom, she's going to work, she's paying the bills, she's doing what she can. But I promise you, I will call her, say, Adrian, get the meat out of the freezer. Adrian, get the key from under the mat. Again, remember I told you, when this happened with these children, I teach Adrian how to lock and open the door. I teach him where the key is, where the torch is. Adrian, what is your name? Adrian, how old are you? Adrian, where do you live? Adrian, know that you open the door, go next door, go next door to Chris and tell him, mommy fell, mommy's not getting up, daddy fell, daddy's not getting up. Yes, I do, survival skills, because there's no way on this green earth, no way. My mom, my dad, I see them being beaten up like that, I will blast the whole restaurant or oh, it will go all the way off. It will go all the way off. That the boy has a gun. That the boy has a loaded gun. Tells me the kind of circumstances these children mother are living in. Let's call it like it is. Do you think that my friend who went to this concert. That he would come out. And he would see his mother being beaten up savagely by a stranger. And nobody is stepping up to help. Do you think that he wouldn't have blasted the gun? Do you think that he wouldn't have done that? You're joking. He would have blown the whole place up. Because what happened? The city of Chicago failed that child. The city of Chicago put that responsibility on this boy. Because you did not do it for the mother. Because nobody in that restaurant intervened. Because nobody said that this is wrong. Because it's become a way of life. Because these motherfuckers up in here that are ill-treating women back and forth, this is what it is. To the point you got no rights. And this is why the DA said no charges, self-defense. Why? Because like Kimora Lee had said, and she's a single mother, I went to the police. They didn't do anything. You know how many single mothers have gone to the police and complained? You know how many of them have gone with black eyes? You know how many of them, missing teeth, they go to work with glasses? They have a manager who is micromanaging them, talking to them any kind of way? Because they've got nobody to stand up for them. These are the lives of my sisters out there in Chicago. This is the temperature. This is the heat. And they're told, walk away. Be the bigger person. Don't let it escalate. We're coming to you. We're catching up with you. We're going to get these men or whatever. Guess what? It's a goddamn lesson for all the other motherfuckers out there that want to have any funny ideas. I said it. Sometimes you've got to push the limit. They push me, I push back. Even a small mouse in the corner 
you push it, it'll push back. It's a goddamn lesson for all the other guys out there with any funny ideas. You'll get your ass capped. I don't feel sorry for him at all. Not at all. He beyond deserved it. He been deserved it. He just got it out in the streets. And he didn't know it that day. Because he's so cocky. He's so arrogant. And he's got that God complex that I'll take care of you. You put your hands on another person, are you mad? That's what we say in Niger. You must be very mad, weary. You must be mad. But yet it happens everywhere. Single mothers, you don't have a man behind you. So you're going to get it. But this little boy stood up and took care of beeswax. This is part one. Like I told you, I'm getting there. Part two. I'm thirsty. I have my Coke here. Coke Zero and ice. I love ice. <laughs> You know I love you, my sisters. I live for you. Um, when I started this channel, I didn't know what direction it would go. I love makeup, I love fashion, and so that's what I did. Until I think I realized that a lot of you came to me for guidance. And you wanted guidance. You wanted the right way. You wanted something that would brighten up your day, that you could take away. And I want to tell you something. I've never said it before. I think, A, because when I was young, I really thought I'd have six children. I always wanted a big family. But Ula and I met later on in life. And that's A-OK. -okay, and we're blessed with Adrian. So I take my younger ones, like my children. And I've said it before on this channel, that I never had any daughters. God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surprise you. And I have over 650,000 daughters to boot. And I pray, God, let me get 10 million more. I live for you. I love you. I, by nature, if you ask me what are my qualities, I love 100%. I'm very generous. I'm very loyal. I'm very, very hardworking, very hardworking. I'm funny. I love fashion, makeup, beauty. And in some ways, to a degree, I'm quite vain. <laughs> I am also quick-tempered. I'm also hot-tempered. But ever since I had Ula, sorry, ever since I got married to Ula, it came down a notch because I realized once we got married, it wasn't only me. I was kind of responsible for the way I behaved because in any which way I did behave, it would fall on Ula. I was very aware of that. So I always made sure that I behaved in a certain way. And in so doing, I learned how to curtail my hot temper and anger outside in these streets. When I got it, when I had Adrian, believe you me, I've never heard truer words. When a child is born, the mother is reborn. You know why? Because the innate skills are given to you because you need to take care of another child. You don't have them before you have a child because you don't need them. But when you have a child, there are instincts that are just there. I would wake up at 10 a.m. and I felt that it was the morning. Ask Ula. Yes, I did. I did my YouTube and everything, I went out, I did all kinds of stuff. And I felt that, you know what, 10 a.m. was a nice time in the morning to wake up and it was kind of okay because I would also be up to maybe 2, 3 in the morning. At that time when I first started 
I had an old computer that used to crash every five minutes. So sometimes, especially when I would be doing the red carpet review, it would crash and I would have to do it all over again. And I'll be up till two in the morning. I didn't mind. So, when Adrian was born, it humbled, humbled my bum. Humbled me in a way that I cannot even express in words for you. But I tell you this, those of you in England, you will know. Adrian wasn't well one day. You know when they start nursery, they get all kinds of little things. And he had a high fever. That day, it was as if I was being tested. I really was being tested. And so, uh, Adrian ended up having a fever. And when you have a fever at nursery, you cannot go back to nursery. You have to wait for two, three days until it subsides. In the meantime, I had to make an appointment with the GP. The GP here in London is the, the general practitioner. It's NHS. It's free. We pay our taxes and these are all the benefits we get up out of it. And so I called, 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 called. Couldn't get through. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Didn't have the time. I took Adrian, put him in the stroller, zoomed down there and made the appointment. I said, I'm not going. Why don't you give me an appointment? He gave me the appointment. Adrian was crying. I was taking him out. I was coaxing him. And he said, come back at so, so, so time and come to the front door. Uh, sorry, and come to the front desk. When I came, I came straight to the front desk. What? Get back, you black... I found myself, listen to this, where I would have said, say what now? My son was sick. I need the appointment. This is, this is what was all flashing in front of me in nanoseconds. If I kill this bitch, I'll go to jail. If I touch her, I'll go to jail. If I stand here and talk to her, I might damn near even miss the appointment where Adrian needs medical attention. I found myself saying, I'm sorry. I've already made an appointment and I was told to come to the front desk. You don't have to call me all of those names, but it's okay. And I took Adrian back, because I had the stroller, and I came to the side. And it was one of the people at the reception just said, come this way. I didn't even feel it. I, I can't explain it. It just kind of rolled off my back. I went into the room, and the doctor that I usually see wasn't there that day. It was some other woman who was very short with me. Uh -huh. What's wrong with him? I said, he's got a fever, he's hot. Oh, well, he's not hot. I said, yes, because I've given him neurofen because I'm not going to keep him, you know, with a high fever waiting to see you. Given him neurofen, he's not eating, he's peeing very little. You can see him, he looks sallow. Um, you know what? I don't think it's anything or whatever. I cannot give you antibiotics. I beg your pardon, I'm going ahead of it. I said, and I believe he needs antibiotics. She said, why do you think he needs antibiotics? This is the conversation I was having. I said, my father's a doctor. I lived in a home where I've had all kinds of things, and I know that my son needs antibiotics, on top of which he has had antibiotics before. Might I add, if you do not mind also, could you also give me suppositories? Because when you give a child antibiotics, it's every four, four hours, yes? But I knew that when Adrian sleeps, I don't want to wake him up. I want to put the suppositories into his bottom so that he can sleep and still get the medication and it will not be disturbed because you can take paracetamol and stuff. For you new moms, get ready. For my older moms, you know what I'm talking about. But for whatever reason, in my angst to get this, to take care of Adrian, I don't know, I'm just under the suspicion. She didn't, she, I think she got offended or she just brushed me away and she refused me antibiotics for my son. 
I was speechless. Ula came later and was inside the room with us and she refused him antibiotics because she, uh, Adrian wouldn't open his mouth and I suspected that it was, you know, throat infection. And because she couldn't open, she didn't try too much, she said, I'm not going to give him the antibiotics. I left there with hot, steaming tears in my eyes. I felt as if, God, you're testing me. But when I tell you the intense hatred I had for this woman, it was unbelievable. It was almost as if the spitfire was coming out of my pores. I got to the front desk and I said, don't you ever, ever let me see this doctor again. I said, where is Dr. Susu and so? He said, he's coming tomorrow. She was, she went because some of these doctors, they go to other hospitals and help. I said, book me first thing tomorrow. And if you, and if you can alert her, please let her call me anytime. And I was just taking care of Adrian, giving the neurofen. I was dying because I could see how sick Adrian was. And he was getting sicker and sicker. Christina came in the evening. The following morning, about seven o'clock, my doctor called me, said, bring Adrian, bring, 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 bring him right away. And she used like a spatula in the side of the mouth and opened his mouth. trying to because I want to I want to show you Adrian's mouth throat was as red as this she gave me the prescription she said go right now and go and get him the antibiotics penicillin I didn't sleep for those two days and I never felt an intense hatred like I had for that doctor at the same time, I knew that I couldn't be erratic, I couldn't scream, I couldn't shout, I couldn't insult her, I couldn't do anything. Because for me, you only make the situation worse. Miss Hood, I'm on your side. Ten toes deep in the line of defense. But when we are mothers, it is no longer about us. Sometimes we have to take the high road in order to preserve what we love the very most. If it was me, and Adrian was outside, I would have walked. I would have walked because the love I have for Adrian way surpasses the hatred I had for that doctor. I have for this man that doesn't even know me, that is a bully, that goes about behaving like this, is a complete non-entity to society. He's not worth it to me. He's not worth it. He's not worth it. He's not worth it to my son. I would have walked. I would have walked. Because this circumstance could have gone all the way left. Your son is not a professional shooter. He's not an assassin. He's not a professional assassin. He could, yes, and perhaps that was why, the, unfortunately, this guy died. This guy paid it with his life because it was a tussle. So when you're saying, let me shoot the legs, which I would have done, I would have missed it because by the time the bullet hit for the legs, the torso was in. The head was in. Even worse, it could have been you. It can escalate out of control. And you live the rest of your life with regret because you would have said, was it worth it? This Chinese restaurant, I shouldn't have been up in there anyway. I'm trying to get myself fit together and get myself toned and look fabulous for summer. Summer ready. It's you and your son.
your beautiful, fabulous, wonderful son. That as much as he has to be an adult because his father is not present and I don't know why. Because you see, we, it, there's so much emphasis on the single mother, the single mother. The single mother is the single mother because the man is not there. Because now, you know what? We got to do the two jobs. Naomi Campbell did it on Father's Day. She said, it's your day too. Ming Lee and Ayoki Lee said, you know what, Kimora? Happy Father's Day. Because guess what? Uh, Russell is out in Bali doing yoga. Because he's not there on the daily. Because he's not there taking them to school, bringing them back from school. How were they at school? If they have any issues, if they have any problems, if they have issues with other students or they have insecurities. I have little children that say, Mom, Dad, the worst days, the worst days in school is Mother's Day and Father's Day. Just the other day when we picked up Adrian, the teachers made, and Adrian, made a little card for him to say, Daddy, happy birthday, because I put it up on Instagram. Because you know what? Single mothers are not superhuman. They can't do it all, but my God, they try. What is happening to the men in society? I don't blame this mother. I don't blame this son. I blame the men in the society and the DA got it right. It's the only reason why I might skim over and say, let me come and study law because our men are not doing anything. And then the ones that are causing problems, you don't even use a broom and beat him out of there. How dare you bring problem to my market? Because the Chinese, <laughs> the Chinese restaurant now, I don't know whether they are open or shut because you know what? It's a crime scene. I love forensic medicine. I live for it. I do live for it. And this is what it is. My sisters, I live for you. I love you. I support you. I stand by you. And God damn it, about goddamn time. I'm so sorry, but you know what? Sometimes if somebody got to say it. It's about time. I didn't want it to go down this way. I really didn't. But it was kind of sort of necessary to send a message out there. Because what? Because the DA, because the police, because the people that are in charge, because the restaurant did nothing. They did nothing. So guess what? We got to do something. And this little man, this little king stood up. And it breaks my heart that he will have to live with this. You put him in that position. You put him, society put him in that position. Because you know what? We're all emotional sometimes. Because you know what? We all get fed up sometime. Because sometimes we're like, fuck it. Let's go. I get it. We're human beings. We're human beings. And sometimes we let and we lose it. You see, I had Adrian when I was much older. I was in my late, 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 late 40s. I guarantee you I would not be the mother that I am now to when I was 20, 30. No way. No way. I didn't have it. I didn't have the experience. I've slowed down also. You know, life teaches you. And I know where I burn my oil. And I always focus on my bag. Because that bag is going to give me the financial freedom to do what I really want to do for the best of all. And give out to Adrian. And say, Adrian, here's yours for your kids, for your children, for your this, da-da-da-da. Adrian is the only desalu vold in the entire world. I pray God he has the six children I did not have. Keep on. It's your legacy in a sense. I have to think of him. I have to protect him. I have to forget about me. I have to eat the shit to protect him. Sisters, that's what we got to do. Because this was a unique case where it kind of sort of worked out. And I hear that Miss Hood is suing the Chicago. Yes, sue them. Sue them. You know what? All of this is, it, it, you've not even skimmed over the tops of therapy. You're going to be replaying this over and over. It's trauma for her. It's trauma for her son. It's trauma for her because I know deep down inside, she also didn't want all of this. Sue them. Sue them and make an example for all of the other mothers out there, for all of the guys out there, the fathers, the absent fathers. The men in society, you have an obligation. You have an obligation to us, to protect us, to protect us in society. That if you don't see anybody, it's on you to do it. 
It's on you to do it. If not, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? No, you got to do it. Because that is the point of you being somebody in society. If not, I don't want to know you. And guess what? You don't count. You don't need to vote because you are useless. You are useless. Go to jail. Stay there. No, don't go. I'm not going to take my money. Take care of you over there. You're useless. Go. Wherever. I don't know. I just really had to come 100 and call it like it is. It's a horrible situation as single moms to be taking care of your children, going to work, putting food on the table, and society turns against you. Society just brushes you aside. Society, in essence, becomes your enemy. Because if my enemy is attacking me and you are standing there, you are also my enemy. You can't do that. You did that to me, you did that to my son. I'm flipping the script because it's always all oh, black women always complain. All oh, black women always this. All oh, black women always that. It's hard to be a black woman. It's hard being a black single mother. It's hard. It is hard. It is hard up in these streets. I know it. I see it. I have friends that are single mothers and you guys are better than me. You are better than me in every way because you see, I'm doubled up. I have a husband that loves me, loves my son, and he is in every way, shape, and form. We do everything together. Shoot, he even does more than me. He even supports me up in these streets with my YouTube. Let's call it like it's real. How many brothers would have supported me at 46? You better go sit down somewhere. Let's really call it. Let's really call it. I'm angry. I'm annoyed. And I hope she gets the coin. And you know what I tell you, sis? Take the money, get out of Chicago, and find a better life for yourself and your son. You also need therapy, and your son needs therapy. And I forgot to say it in the beginning, but I'm going to say it now. I am sorry. I am sorry that happened to you. I am sorry to all of these women that suffer physical abuse in the home, outside of the home, mental, emotional abuse at work, that you feel low that you feel as if nobody is here for you. All right, I'm gonna tell you this is the plan. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Because you see, I can't help you if I don't got the numbers. It's just true tea. Because I know what I want to do. Because I know, and I never thought about it, only until very recently, that Fumi, how do you want to leave this earth? What do you want to leave behind? And it came to me, I want to leave this place a better place for my son. I want to leave this place with a little bit of a good reputation to say Fumi did this for us. Fumi did this for the single mothers. Fumi did this for me, her, you know, internet daughter. Because it occurred to me that Adrian has a multitude of siblings. You.